Today we're going to show some tips for using the new Monster Clay hard and soft. Now Monster Clay has existed as a medium grade for several years now, but recently they have introduced a new hard as well as a soft version. Now one of the things you'll need to know when you're using the hard version, if you followed some of our other videos in the past, the hard Monster Clay melts at a slightly higher temperature and does take a little bit longer to melt down into a pourable liquid. And again, just like the other Monster Clay, I always like to uh, take mine out of the plastic container and put it into a crock pot to melt that down. And that will take several hours. So make sure you melt that down well before you need it. Now to begin, we'll be pouring up a copy of Tim's Hand into an alginate mold. And one of the important things you want to remember when you're pouring monster clay into an alginate mold is it's real important to keep the temperature below boiling, so below 212 degrees. If you exceed that, you'll find that you get a lot of air bubbles and distortions in your cast. So it's a good idea if you're concerned about temperature, use a thermometer to check that and make sure that you're below boiling temperature or below 212F. Now one of the things I like to do is when we're pouring this hand up, I always like to pour it in and rotate the mold around, pour it back out, and then fill it back up again. Now we're going to pour up this hand solid, uh, but I always like to first pour in a little bit of a slush coat, slosh that around, and then fill it back up again. And by turning the mold around as I'm emptying it out, that uh, helps eliminate any air bubbles on the sides of the pour. And that's real important, especially with hands, because there's a lot of chance for air bubble entrapment around the fingertip area. So just by sloshing that around, you have a much higher uh, chance of success of getting a bubble-free casting. Now, typically for the demold time with uh, monster clay, any of the monster clays, when you're melting these down and then allowing it to cool at room temperature, I like to let the mold sit for several hours and, if possible, overnight to let it cool completely. And then the demold is much safer and you don't have to worry about accidentally shearing off fingers or distorting a cast when you're removing it from an alginate mold. Now we've chosen to use the Monster Clay Hard for this particular application of pouring up a hand because the hard Monster Clay has a, a carvable kind of quality to it. And that's ideal for pieces like this where you don't want it so soft where you could bump it or look at it wrong and distort your sculpture. You want something very firm so that you can go in and correct uh, minor defects in the cast and not disturb the other areas that are the way you want them to be. Now it's important to remember that ultimately hard clay, soft clay, medium clay, there's no, no, uh, there's no right clay to use. It's all according to the job and the sculpting that you're doing. The main benefit is that carvable quality that we have with a hard clay that allows us to work on uh, fine detail in difficult to reach areas without disturbing the surrounding area. And by the way, if you've never bought anything from our company, uh, this is a good time to get a Biddy promotional mug because if you have no Nothing from Biddy, you should at least have a Biddy promotional mug because nothing says professional like a Biddy promotional mug. Now the Monster Clay Soft is just that. It's a softer quality of clay than the medium grade. And the soft melts much like the medium, so there's no, uh, no real difference there to speak of. Um, one thing I do like with the soft clay, I do like to pour that up a little bit thicker since it is softer. If I'm pouring up a life cast or pouring up hands or faces or anything like that, a lot of times I like to pour it up solid when I'm using the soft clay because it is very pliable. Now here we're going to pour up a copy of Tim's face in a Platsil Gel 25 life cast mold. And this is just a very basic Gel 25 life cast mold made with Gel 25 brushed on and a plaster bandage mother mold. And we're going to pour this solid just for simplicity's sake. So we want to rest that in a bucket to help it uh, stabilize while we're pouring it. And we're also going to pour up an ear mold. Um, this is a 7111 mold of an ear, just to show you how this can be cast into a silicone mold and demolded. Now, I like to uh, melt my monster clay at low for several hours, and you'll notice that that's plenty hot here. It's actually bubbling. It's gotten nice and warm and has the consistency of like whole milk. So you always want to stir it up and suspend that clay back into the mixture. Um, after it sits for a while, it does start to separate. So make sure you stir that up before you're ready to pour. 
And again, we're just going to pour this solid. So we're pouring it all the way to the top and then just walking away. Now, it's important to remember when you pour a life cast like this solid, you get much higher a much higher shrinkage rate than you would if you were sloshing this around like you've seen us do in previous videos. So take that into account anytime you're pouring up a solid piece like this. And same thing for the ear. We're going to just pour this up solid. And because this is soft monster clay and it is very pliable, it's important that we allow this to sit overnight to completely cool down to room temperature before we demold it. You can put this in a refrigerator to cool it off a little bit faster, but just remember that tends to cool the outside of the cast faster than the inside. So it's a good idea just to let it cool on its own overnight and then you're ready for the demold. And here we have the cast the next day and we're ready to pull it out of our silicone mold. And by now it's cool enough that it has good handling strength. And that's important. You don't want to rush pulling a clay cast out of a silicone mold because if you do, you could have a lot of distortions and lose some of that texture on the surface. So here we have Tim's face ready for re-sculpting. And now because we're using the soft monster clay, it's very easy if we want to to go in and make adjustments to his face. We could bend the nose around. It's a lot easier to change the expression than say with the medium or the hard clay. And our ear that we cast, same rules apply. We let that sit overnight and then we can very carefully pull that out of our silicone mold. And again, that's 7111. That's a very soft silicone. So it's ideal for this kind of very complicated part and removing a very delicate pattern without damaging it. And now there's our ear removed and ready for any sculpting or remolding that we might need to do. Now, it's important to remember that there's no right or wrong clay. Uh, hard, medium, soft clay, there are benefits to each clay. There's no right or wrong clay to work with. We have customers that prefer to work exclusively in soft clay and others that prefer hard clay. So it all comes down to your sculpting style. If you like more of a carvable, carvable consistency or if you like more of those malleable properties of soft clay. So it's a good idea to experiment with those. And remember, each one has its benefits for different styles of sculpting. So there you have it, soft, medium, and firm clay, and of course the soft that's very soft that can be uh, maneuvered around uh, just by pushing on it, and the hard clay that's more of the carvable consistency have now been added to our product line of sculpting clays. And of course our clays and other special effects products are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com.